This is Twit. It feels like our tech is moving faster and faster every day. The robots are stealing our jobs. Privacy is dead. The internet is ruining the next generation uh, now more than ever. Uh, it's important to recognize that we need to see where we're going. And in order to see where we're going, it's important to see where we've been. And I am very excited today on Triangulation to talk to Leslie Berlin. She is the author of Troublemakers, the Silicon Valley's coming of age. She is also uh, the uh, project historian for the Silicon Valley Archives at Stanford University. I am honored to talk to you, Leslie. Likewise, glad to be here. <laughs> so let's start. You, you've made a career out of studying uh, Silicon Valley history. Um, why, why, what fascinates you the most about this area? Oh, gosh. Well, I've always thought that American history really underplays how important technology has been from the very, very beginning. And when I moved out here, which was a long time ago, it was in 1993, I started looking around and realizing, well, this is where so much that determines our lives happened. And that was 1993. I mean, it, it, you know, now I've, we didn't really even have a functional web at that point. Um, and so now when you think about all the things that you spend your day doing and how dependent you are on your technology and how terrifying it is if you say lose it, um, it really drives home how much our everyday lives are infused with Silicon Valley, even for people who don't live here. I know. I mean, you, you read it's only 35 square miles. It's not it's not a very big place. Um, I mean, I think the idea of Silicon Valley is a lot bigger than the actual space. Mm -hmm. um, wh why does why here? Why there? I mean, why in that space? Why, why did everything develop there? Well, a couple things came together at the same time. Um, first, Silicon Valley got really, really lucky that the mom of the guy who invented the transistor lived here. And uh, he wanted to be with his mom. His name is William Shockley. He wanted to be with his mother and uh, decided to set up a company here. And the transistor is like a little grain of sand around which the entire Silicon Valley pearl has grown. It's just been layer after layer. And when you look at what came out of the valley and continues to, it's, it's so much of it can be traced back to that transistor. It's like a the littlest doll in one of those Russian nesting doll sets. And so the technology was key. Just it was just that was just plain old luck. Timing was super important as well because that transistor makes its way here in 1956. And at that point, there really isn't an industrial economy here. It's it's pretty much orchards and with with a few companies. Hewlett Packard was here already. But it was the the major economy was still fruits and canning fruits. And so what happened was you were able to build an entire ecosystem around technology. Uh, Gordon Moore, in a different context, told me that one of the great ways to uh, make sure you have a good part of the market is to shoot your arrow and then draw the bullseye around the arrow. And that's sort of what happened in the valley. The technology landed here and then the business environment grew up around the technology, kind of perfectly developed for it. And a third thing was uh, that the culture out here was remarkably open. Um, back Even back in the 50s and 60s, there, so, there was this huge influx of people to Silicon Valley. And um, of course, that influx continues today with people from all over the world. And by the time you get to the book uh, that I wrote, which is about the 1970s, you have that kind of openness becoming the counterculture and the hippie movement. And so you ended up with a very, very powerful technology in the hands of free thinkers. And that is what really kicked things off. 